Hey everyone, today I'm going to be answering your questions. About three days ago, I uploaded a post into my community tab asking right here, Hey everyone, doing a question and answer video soon. Leave questions and content ideas below and I will discuss in an upcoming video. Please keep comments respectful. Thanks for watching. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set this on newest comments first. And then we're going to go down the list. It says I have 113 comments in the past couple days. So I'm going to get down all the way to the bottom of it and go up to the newest. So I'm making my way down. I'm going pretty fast. I'm already two days back. Do, do, do. Got a lot of interesting comments here. I'm going to try to answer them as best as possible. A lot of things about both of my channels people are asking we'll see a lot of people want me to show around this room i will do that when i'm done answering comments i'll show you what i have around here almost my entire collection is actually in this room maybe maybe eight percent of it or a little bit less is not actually here of things i've opened it's in storage and I'm still making my way to the bottom of this list. It's not the fastest internet out here. I just keep my finger on the down button. Still loading up a lot of things. I think it's taking so long. Because when you get down in this stuff, that's when it sometimes will start crashing. Alright, we finally made it to the bottom. Alright, first one we have here is I have beaver issues in SH New Hampshire if you're interested I'm not sure what S no it's SW SW New Hampshire I'm not exactly sure what town that is all right second comment what sparked the idea of opening old food videos for YouTube well that actually started since I was a really young kid my father always told me that canned food is a forever food. It's sealed, it'll last forever. So, I never really got a chance to do that, but one time at an estate sale, the guy had a ton of these old cans. He literally didn't want them. He didn't know they were in the house, so I took them. I believe it was free. Yes, I do believe it was free, and that's my original opening decades old canned food video. I didn't save any of those cans. I wasn't a collector back then. That video is like my most unprofessional one ever. That took place on the basement floor of my mother's house. I was using the old rival can opener, which I found on the side of the road after a yard sale in a box of free stuff. Pretty reliable. It's still going five years later from finding it. Back then, I didn't have a car or anything. I was I put that in the, my bike rack and just rode home. But that video, I opened the cans up, poured them out, they did not look as bad as expected, but no, most of them did not survive. In that original canned food video, they weren't even super old. It was like, oldest one was 80s. Some of them were only 20 years old. So that proved to me nothing happened. So uh, back then, my channel wasn't what it was today. It was mostly wildlife. That's why it's called New England Wildlife. I never really did good videos back then of wildlife. It was six years ago. I wasn't really good at filming like I am now. But I still do some trail camera videos nowadays. Yep, that wasn't very professional, but it did very well. So I started making more videos like that. Next comment. What, if any, is your holy grail of unopened old food that you want to acquire and open. I'm not really wanting anything. I just come across things sometimes in online auctions or inside people's houses during estate sales. The next one is, can you open up old MREs? I don't have any old MREs that I plan on opening up, but I have done a lot on my channel, like MREs in a bag. The oldest one I've opened is from the late 80s. It came in a brown bag from the U.S. military. I also have a bunch of MREs, if you consider a C-ration an MRE. I have a ton of videos. We used to do that about two years ago. 
but those kind of got boring. There's only so many sea ration videos, and I'll show you a few sea rations I have later on. Uh, do you eat ketchup on hot dogs? Sometimes I do. Sometimes if it's a good hot dog or a good sausage, I don't want to cover up the taste. If it's like a expensive one, I'll eat it plain because I want to actually taste it. But I buy Dollar Tree cheap ones a lot. They're not the best, so I try to make them taste better. How many vintage cans or vintage tins do you have on your shelves in your main filming area? I've never actually counted, but probably a couple hundred. Uh, what is your favorite local animal? That would probably be the moose, then the beaver would probably be the second. I, li I like those animals. We don't see moose often anymore. I actually got worried last year because last year, for the first time ever on a couple of my trips up to Maine, it's usually where I see them every night. They're out walking around. For the first time, I had two trips. I didn't see any. And uh, you saw all the guys around with their orange hunting caps. I thought they killed them all off. But this year, they're back or around everywhere. Because a moose, I've heard, is technically, it's supposed to be a endangered species. But Fish and Game claims hunting them actually helps them because less moose means less tick population. I don't, I don't think that's actually... I think any animal that's rare should be protected. Um, what is the worst thing you've ate in your YouTube career? Hmm, let me think about that. Probably the old spam. Right here. It left a horrible aftertaste and it actually made the room stink for a couple days. The stinkiest thing ever opened up in this room. What's the oldest thing you can remember that you have eaten? Uh... That'd probably be, I opened up a can of soup from the 1930s right here called Bullman Soup. That's actually one of my favorite videos I've ever done. It was a dry product with a bunch of dehydrated vegetables. It came out good. It was bland, but it didn't taste bad. I believe it still would have kept me alive in an emergency. And if it counts, I did do a taste test of old paprika I have over there. Uh... No, it's actually right here, old paprika from the late 1800s that was actually made in Massachusetts. If that counts, it tasted like nothing. It was too old. What is your favorite part of coming up with new content for YouTube? What is your least favorite? My least favorite would probably be... It's very hard to find certain stuff here. It's very hard to find new filming locations once they're unusable again. But... My favorite part is actually getting out and doing stuff. My actual post-10 videos would be my favorite. If you got an unopened can of food from the 1800s, would you still taste test it if it wasn't petrified? If it was a dry product, probably. Most of the products I am willing to eat are dry because the risk is very low. And someone replied, assuming that he could find an unopened can from that era, the solder seal would have leached Yes, it would have leached many bad stuff into it. But I think a can that's actually filled probably wouldn't have lasted that long. It probably would have leaked. My oldest canned food I ever opened was from the early 1930s. It was the old cream corn, which is actually my current most popular video. What is the weirdest thing you've experienced at your job? You mean doing YouTube or my actual job? Not exactly sure what I'd consider weird. I found weird things, creepy things like stuffed animals and stuff in culverts, if that counts. And I've also found a lot of weird things inside walls doing electrical work. I would love to see you eat loot fisk. What is that? Highlight, copy. I'm going to go over to Google, see what is that. Norwegian kind of fish, it looks like to me. 
What does Luke Fish taste like? Mildly fishy with a soapy aftertaste and a hint of ammonia on the plate. Hmm. Have you ever gotten sick? There's a lot of comments saying that, so I'm just going to answer it once. No, I have never got sick. My stomach has gotten comfortable thinking I was going to get sick, but that's just from the fear. But I'm pretty careful of what I ingest. I'm not going to just eat a can that's full of lead, an old bulged can. Of course, it might have bacteria in it, botulism, that kind of stuff. I'm, care I'm careful with that. No, I've never been sick. Or what's the least queasy... Uh, Least queasy you've got from any old food. The least queasy, do you mean to say a most? Probably the old spam, ones that just make you want to vomit. What, what has been your favorite abandoned place to explore? That would be the Pennsylvania Turnpike Tunnel, which is actually open to the public at your own risk. But be very careful if you do join that. There's a bunch of videos of that on my other channel. And do you have plans to do more? Whenever I come across it, I think I've explored everything known abandoned that's actually near me. I'd have to travel far to another state to find stuff. Uh, I like the one, too. One day I'll have to upload my abandoned homes I went through. Alright, uh, next comment. Why do you call it oven when you of in the food... Wait... Why do they call it oven when you of in the cold food of out hot eat the food? I'm not exactly sure what you mean there. What product had the worst effect on your gut? Probably not anything. I've never got sick on this channel. What got you into collecting old containers? My first video is what got me into collecting that. Uh, this is like a three-year-old collection. What's your favorite item in your collection? Hard to pick a favorite, but there's definitely ones I like better than others. Uh, what is the item that you would want to find in perfect condition? Well, that'd be cool to find right underneath my table. I have a giant can of Humpty Dumpty chips. That'd be kind of fun to find unopened. When are you going to camp in an abandoned building again? I might never do that again. I took a lot of risk by doing that one. But I do plan on doing a lot more camping videos over the next winter. I don't really like camping much in the summer. It's too buggy. I love cold weather camping. I, I overheat very easily. Between Post 10 and New England, what would you say is the content you enjoy making the most? Also, do you have any cans that you've been storing or keeping safe to open in the future? Like stuff that would, would still be okay today but expire in 10 years. Me and my friends love your content. Keep it up. Thank you. I'm saying thank you. Um... I definitely like my out and about uh, explorations the most. And no, I'm not keeping anything aging it myself. Uh, at post 10, great idea. You have slept in an abandoned motel. You have slept in a culvert. You have slept in an igloo that you have made. Uh, have you slept in any unique places that you have never filmed on YouTube? Only normal camping, like in tents and car camping a lot. I do a lot of camping when I'm on road trips. Just pulling over in parking lots, Walmart, dead-end roads. Also, I've not seen any magnet fishing videos recently. Will you revisit and film that fun little activity? Probably not. Where I live is kind of clean. I don't really find much unless I'm like under a railroad trestle. It's just a bunch of pieces of iron, which don't really have to be removed. They're not hurting the environment. It's just rusting away. Um, one time I tried magnet fishing in the city of Hartford, Connecticut, thinking it would be awesome because there's a lot of people there dumping junk in the canals. So when I went there scouting and there was this park, I felt unsafe there because there's like needles, garbage galore. 
but I found a way down a trail going down to this canal because there's a double culvert pipe that they now put bars in front of it so junk can't get stuck in it. I've seen old people's videos. There's cars and stuff stuck in these underground rivers because it used to flood the city, so they buried it to prevent it from ever happening again. And there's like walkways, like when you see people walking in sewers in movies, there's like two walkways with the water running between. It looked really cool, but I felt unsafe there. There was needles galore. I think it would be unsafe. The kind of area I feel like there'd be people that would get mad because they don't want you uncovering things they may be trying to hide in the water. I was confronted by a homeless person that was in a tent and they pointed to the ground saying, you see this line? Don't cross it and we won't have a problem. I could tell they didn't want me there. I was going to return with a few friends to do that. Nobody felt it was safe doing it there. Not a good area. All right. What inspired you to start collecting and trying old canned foods? All right, I've answered that. I'm going to skip over the rest of them. Is there a food cans? Is there an food cans for kitchen items you wish you can get a hold of? All right. Um, do you ever visit Canada, Quebec, or New Brunswick? Any thoughts on your northern neighbor? Yes, I do plan on going there at some point. I do plan on getting a passport at some point to be able to go there. But I would like to do a lot of exploring around here first, whenever fuel prices go back down. What would you absolutely never open in your collection if you got to acquire it? Well, there's nothing, there's nothing I would never actually open, I don't think. Sometimes if I'm able to, I'll buy two of an item so I can keep one in mint condition. Any comments on what it is like living in a rural area, far from large cities? What are the benefits and drawbacks? Well, I definitely do like living in a semi-rural place more than I lived in the city. I was born in a city and I was forced to live there until I was 18 before I was finally able to leave. Uh, living in a city, I have constantly getting uh, picked on, big, bad city schools, can't really keep decorative things in the yard, constantly getting robbed, house broken into, felt very unsafe in a city, so I moved to a semi-rural place. A lot of times you'll see me on Post 10 exploring in very rural parts where there's like no houses for a hundred miles, it's the middle of nowhere, dirt roads. I don't live that far out. I actually have to travel sometimes eight or more hours out of my way to get to those places to be able to film that kind of stuff. Benefits. I, I feel like you got more freedom. People don't mess with you. You have no neighbors to get mad at you for making noises, having fires, that kind of stuff. You don't have to obey noise ordinances. Drawbacks, I would say, if you get in trouble, no one's going to find you drawbacks. It costs a lot of money to live out because you got to drive far to the store. You got to make every trip count. Everything costs slightly more because it got to be shipped out into the country. Uh, good luck if you need work being done because it's hard to find people that will work on your house. Most companies have a limit, a range, places they go. Sometimes you got to pay them more to come to your place. Um, how did you come up with the name Post 10? Okay, Post 10 means nothing. It's a name I came up with when I was 14 and I created Post 10. No, maybe I was 15 or 16. I, I can't really remember, but someone replied, ooh, that's a good question. No, it doesn't mean anything. It just means I post things. In fact, Post 10 was created, uh, I didn't get to see my father much when I was a child and he was able to watch my videos. In fact, a lot of my old aquarium videos were actually meant for him to see. And uh, he was proud of me when my channel started taking off. Uh, he passed away in 2019 from uh, dealing with lung cancer a few years. That actually came as a shock. I didn't know he had it. He was telling me it was Lyme disease because he didn't want me to worry about it. He said it would go away. I should have known, but when someone is... When someone close to you is sick, you don't see, you can't see it. You pretend nothing's wrong. 
His hair was falling out. I should have known it was cancer or something. But then his hair started growing back. I guess he got better for a while, but then he went way downhill. He was a heavy smoker. He tried to change at the end. He wanted to be around to see what I would become. He started doing stuff, trying to help himself, but like, he was deeply addicted to cigarettes. He started vaping at the end, hoping it would help him, but yeah, it was too late. Um... Have you ever in, uh, have, you, have you ever encountered a squatter inside of one of the abandoned buildings you explore? That would be scary. Never a squatter, but I have come across people hanging out. Yes, like one time I was talking in there and someone answered me, which was so creepy. I was like, who's there? And it was like, me. Just a voice in the darkness said it was me. So... That was kind of creepy. That was in the Pennsylvania Turnpike Tunnel. That was on camera. What is the oldest thing you own? It doesn't have to be something you've shown on camera. It can be anything. It would probably be one of these paprika or spice bottles from the 1800s. Honestly. That's probably the oldest thing I own. Maybe railroad spikes from back then. I don't have much that old. Favorite time periods and why for various products. Probably the 50s and 60s. They seem to be the most interesting as far as graphics and stuff. Most interesting to open. See how they survive to all those decades. Um, another sick question. How and when did your fascination with trains start? Tell us more about the town of Wagooing and your dad's toad sanctuary. All right, my fascination with trains, that did come from my father. He used to bring me to the tracks at a young age. I've been doing that ever since. I haven't made many train videos lately because I'm not super big into trains. I'm not one of those train enthusiasts that can, like, identify every model. I, I don't carry a CB radio. So I feel like I'm boring people with that type of content. So I rarely do it anymore. If I happen to catch a train passing by, I will film it. Put it at the end of a video for end screens to pop up over, stuff like that. Uh, the town of Wagooin. Uh, my dad had a frog sanctuary actually registered in his backyard. And when I was a kid, I used to dig little trenches and stuff, diverted from a stream and stuff. You know, just dig little trenches. It was fun for a kid. I'd do little tubing, plumbing stuff all over the yard. And it attracted frogs, so my father let me do it. Yeah, he had a license. He was a uh, licensed exotic animal expert. He uh, specialized in reptiles, injured reptiles. He had massive cages in his backyard. He had licenses to keep birds of prey and stuff, things the average public couldn't have. He went to college many years to become a vet. Yeah, his, his house is pretty cool. It used to actually scare me when I was a little kid. His basement, he had like a few rooms he told me never to go in. Because it had like drug lockers, you know, little vials you stick the needle in to give animals all different stuff. He had a room of microscopes. In fact, these microscopes are his. They're useless to me unless I had a professionally cleaned heavy smoker residue inside everything. That's why I don't keep them covered like my good one. They're basically just here for a nostalgic look. These were expensive back in their day, but they're obsolete. They're just decorations now. Yeah. But, yeah, he registered the yard as a sanctuary because somehow in his town, by doing so, he got a break on his water bill because he didn't think he should be charged for sewage bills because the majority of his water usage wasn't going down the drain, and they honored it. Um, yeah, I, I, do, I do wish... I was born earlier, so I could have seen all the crazy reptiles my dad had. By the, by the time I was old enough to understand that stuff, um, yeah, it was too late. He was out of all that stuff. He was on disability by then for different health problems and stuff. He wasn't in that field towards the end. All right. Um, seeing that memories can be triggered by senses... 
What have you reviewed, if any, that have brought you back to your childhood the strongest? Not much here is from my childhood. Stuff from my childhood wouldn't be considered vintage yet. Yeah. I don't remember any of the stuff from my childhood. This stuff is before my time, most of it. How do you get all the old food products you collect? Estate sales and mostly online auctions. How are your pets doing? Uh, the only pets I actually have, I have a Placo algae eater. I have a corn snake named Mr. Wiggles and a cat. Uh, there are some other frogs around the house, but they're not mine. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like downgrading on all my animals. I want to have more freedom to be able to like not be home if I don't want to take care of stuff. Like the way I'm set up now, I can actually leave the cat for a couple weeks. Got the big water tanks for the bowl, big food containers, multiple litter boxes in the other room. And uh, yeah, have you ever considered collecting comic books from the 1950s era or before? I like Mad Magazine or Cracked. I have never really been into comic books or anything like that. How long have you been an electrician? I have been in the electrical field probably for three years now. I am not an electrician. I am an apprentice. When I need the extra money, I will go on board and do that kind of stuff. The reason I never tried to take my electrician exam, even though I would probably pass it, you need a certain amount of hours. And since I have moved between different states, hours are gone. You got to get your license and hours in one state, apparently. Favorite wildlife animal? Probably the moose. Would you buy old food, drink cans from other countries? I did open an Arabic Coca-Cola once. Coca-Cola, anything like that. Pepsi, darker sodas. They're always gross after 10, 20 years. Uh... I did open some Arabic Jello once. I do foreign MRE reviews all the time. I've done things from uh, the UK is where that old, no, Germany's where that old 1930s military canned food came from. Uh, I've opened old and new Russian products, old and new Chinese products. Most of the foreign products I get are new. What's the strangest living thing or dead thing you have found in a vintage container? I have found little weevils, other little insects, mostly their shells dead. Nothing really strange. Have you ever encountered... Oh, have you ever considered to do a live stream doing unboxings or reviewing old products? Maybe someday. I'm not going to rule it out. But I usually don't do that kind of stuff. If you could, would you go into P-R-I-P-Y-A-T? I'm not exactly sure what that word is. Copying, pasting into another window. City in Ukraine. Would you go to... With some of the guys, stalkers from UK that are on YouTube. Obviously, the war has changed things. Well, of course, at some point, I do want to travel, but it's out of my price range for now. If you could bring back a discounted food item, product from the past, what would it be? I'm sure if I th thought hard enough, there's all kinds of things I would love from my childhood that's been discontinued. Recently, I tried to buy Trix yogurt, found out that hasn't been a thing in a long time. King of America, have you ever smelled or tasted something so disgusting it made you throw up? Close things like the spam and very metally things, but I've never actually thrown up from it. As a fellow New Englander, I was wondering if you would be interested in doing a wildlife collab sometime. Not ruling it out, but I'm usually a 
quite the solo person. I would love to know the oldest, rarest thing you own in your collection. Could be old cans, vintage house items, whatever. For whatever reason, old things interest me so much. My cat's name is Smokey. Interesting. What got you into vintage... All right. I'm just curious to know as a person, about you as a person, childhood, significant others, goals. That's a very hard question. I will show my old food display afterwards. Will you ever do kayaking camp out on some remote lakes? I want to go kayaking sometime or canoeing to a like island and do a camp. We all realize that you know better to swallow. No, I've never been sick. Has anyone really been far? I'm not understanding what that means. Here are some things I am curious about. I do not display every item. How many vintage products? I, I'm not exactly sure how many I have overall. There's no way to know how many I've ever had. I may or may not do more household product videos because I go and I buy up a bunch of dangerous chemicals to show the vintage graphics, but then they're so hard to get rid of and some of those dangerous chemicals start leaking. The fumes are dangerous. Probably not again. I explore abandoned places time to time, not as much in the recent months. I will probably not do more abandoned videos on this channel. I will do them on post 10. Yes, I have been caught by the police while exploring abandoned places. They were just doing safety checks on me. I never got kicked out or anything. I'm sorry, I'm just going through a lot of things. A lot of these questions I've already answered. Do you still have that moldy hamburger that's at least three years old? Yes, I do. They're right up here. I will show them in a bit at the end of the video. How is April doing? That's my old dog. Uh, because I'm away a lot doing videos and stuff, lots of overnight trips, it's not easy to have a dog with me. I can't leave the dog unattended if I have to go somewhere. It's just a whole pain in the butt to have. So I gave her away to a family member. I still get to see her. She's still close, but she is not with me and won't be again. I am not into dogs, but she had such a... Pretty unique coloring. And a reply says, that's the impossible Whopper versus the regular Whopper from Burger King. And yes, he still has it. Why do you open old cans of food? Because it's interesting and fun. Do you ever worry about eating the wrong thing? Yes, I do worry about that, but the things I do taste are not that big of a risk. Have your leeches ever escaped? I only have one pet leech. I was worried about that at first because it was so tiny. But now it's pretty big. It's never getting out. I'll show you that at some point too. I have some old videos people thought were pretty creepy of actually letting a drink on myself. It, it's not that big of a risk unless you have like some medical problem. It's too big now. I'm not going to do that again. Uh, because its last meal is blood, it can go 12 to 18 months without any kind of care. So... That's between July and 
December when it needs to eat again. I'm gonna try feeding it worms or I'll get uh, blood from a butcher. Um, huge fan here. Could you tell us more about your unique old stuff and how you got into, um, I have never found a canned food in a culvert, no. But I found one in somebody's sump pump pit. They were using canned food in the bottom of the pit instead of like a cinder block for the pump to sit on top of. It was weird. I don't know why I looked in their sump pump when during their estate sale, but I did. As someone have someone that you ate made you sick enough that you had to go to have someone I think you meant to say hat has something that you ate no where are you from I am from Massachusetts how long have you been tasting these old products probably three years find some foods preserved by the Hans. I, I, I know what you're talking about. I'm just having trouble pronouncing it. Control radiation method rad. I'm having real bad trouble pronouncing that, but I know what you're talking about. And no, I haven't. No question really, but I love your channel so much. Thank you. I don't have any questions. I just want to say that I really enjoy your videos and it is apparent that you enjoy making them. What do you like to do in your spare time when you're not making videos? Not much, honestly. I put most of my time into video making. Otherwise, kind of bored. I'm that kind of person, I just can't sit still. You gotta be doing something at all times. Whether it be just walking in the woods, gardening, planting trees, watching movies, something's gotta be occupying me the way I am. I kinda wish I wasn't like that. What is, what is it about shitty Massachusetts as I have heard from one of your videos? Isn't it where you lived once? I have fond memories of visiting my cousins there years ago. Now do you live in Maine? No, I don't live in Maine yet. But I do want to someday. Yeah, Massachusetts has shitty areas. It has great areas. But overall, as a state, I don't like it. I don't like their laws there. I don't really like that place. But it's probably mostly because I had to grow up in a city that made me uncomfortable almost all the time. I know you get around Maine, New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Mass. Are you considering visiting the Midwest? I do want to visit the Midwest. I want to visit everywhere in the country at some point. I was planning on that multiple times in the past year. Never happened. Things keep getting in the way and now... I just can't. Fuel prices are so high. Doing videos I do now, I'm probably spending $600 a week if I'm doing a trip on fuel. It's insane. Do some old deep tunnels. Show us some spider friends. Collect some cave crickets and transplant them to another colony of cave crickets. What has been the worst product you have opened? Example. It smelled extremely bad or was very moldy. My most memorable nasty thing. I have it up there. None of the cans though. I have the box. This big box of sea rations. It had 12 individual meals, a whole bunch of nasty meats, cheese spread. It made the whole room reek. That'd probably be it. I sincerely worry about you after talking about being sick. Thank you. Do you still have any of that old lemon candy? I believe I do somewhere. 
I believe it's around somewhere. I know I didn't throw it out. It's in a sandwich bag inside it, wherever it is. Um, you, another thing, you remind me so much of my dad. The way you live and your sense of humor. He has been gone close to 17 years. You're always fun and interesting to watch. Thank you, I appreciate that. And another question about April the dog. Do you believe in ghosts, Bigfoots, or aliens? Any stories on encounters you've had? No, I have never encountered a ghost, Bigfoot, or aliens, but... Well, if the universe is endless, something's got to be out there somewhere. What is the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Start a prepping channel. I've thought about st starting a prepping channel, but I don't know if people would really like that, and I'm not that big of a prepper. Uh, the way things are in the world, I have prepped a little bit of stuff. Like, I usually only have enough food on hand to last me like two weeks, but I did stock up on canned food. I have enough now to probably... Uh, Go three months, which I know it's not enough, but I could probably go 12 months if I was like stretching it. Like I knew it was a big issue and I only ate like I'd become skinny, but I could definitely make what I have last. I have a bunch of MREs in this room that I intend on for the channel at some point. Could eat all that um, if I really had to. I, I don't like hurting animals, but I would probably eat things like squirrels and stuff to start off with. Um, would you rather drink one bottle of old bad wine, in parentheses standard size, or eating eight raw eggs? Maybe both. Well, I don't want to get salmonella, so I'd probably chug the wine, get that over with. Because you didn't mention how long it has to take. You could slowly do it. Curious about your car. In every video I watch, I always wonder how you avoid recording showing your car. Yes, I do edit it out because I've had incidents in the past. Twice. One confirmed. Somebody was parked at a street that often floods. Instead of getting out to actually help people and unclog it themselves, they're just waiting there. I wonder how many times, hours they have put into this trying to find me. I know they were because I parked there, got out and do, did it. They were watching me the whole time. As soon as I got back in my car, they're right behind me. I went down so many twists and turns and roads. They're following me. I don't want people knowing because I, I don't want people... Messing with me. There's people out there who don't like me for no other reason than I have been successful online. It's just jerks. And that's why. Um, yeah. Would you... Any plans on exploring? Yes, I will explore some stuff soon. Maybe some abandoned train tracks over the summer. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Hmm. Don't really know. Do you still have your aquariums? I only have one operating aquarium left, and all that's in it is a Placo fish. And it's more of a terrarium because the upper half is all pothos plants. I'm slowly downgrading on that. The only way I will ever start aquariums again is if I get a job where I'm home a lot and I am bored and I can they'll keep me busy taking care of them. Or if I have children who are interested in that stuff. 
had okay this guy has a list of 10 questions for me or a girl has a list of 10 questions have you ever been encountered by a bear yes i have we have black bears which are usually scared of people unless they have a baby but they'll try to avoid conflict at all costs uh for about two years i didn't have working water so i used a local river for bathing and one time when I got out of the river, there was a big bear, like 20 feet, just staring at me. As soon as we locked eyes, it ran away. Other than that, I've never had close encounters, just them running away as my car is approaching. What other things do you do for free, do in your free time other than making YouTube videos? I probably have a big list of hobbies, honestly. It's just hard to think of out of the blue. What are the pros and cons of living in the woods? I already did that. Uh, I, myself, only have three pets remaining. Uh, my pigeon died last year. Um, my mother was taking care of it for the last couple years of its life. Uh, that was a tortoise, not a turtle. And that's my friend's tortoise. It's not mine. And I, yes, I do have a channel specifically showing that tortoise i don't upload to it anymore because uh don't see him as often anymore or the tortoise what is the furthest you've ever traveled furthest from my house would probably be west virginia maybe ohio so far that's myself driving furthest i've traveled was florida but i was two um have you ever gone to the Midwest? No, I haven't. I don't think Ohio counts, so no. Working on culverts. How much do you generally make if it isn't too personal to ask? Uh, each one I probably... Between $50 and sometimes they range to the upper hundreds. It usually costs 200 bucks to make each video. Sometimes more. Because I gotta travel so far seeking these things out. So the bigger videos carry the weight of the videos that don't do so well. I'm sure you've got a lot of questions to... I'm sure I got a lot of questions to ask, but I just want to say I enjoy your videos. I subscribe to all your channels since 2018, I believe. I've learned so much about cans and courts since I've been watching your videos. Keep up the work. Can you hear it? My voice... my. Throat's actually hurting because I'm talking so much right now. And we're still on two days ago. We have a lot of comments to go. Maybe. They actually did slow down towards the end. What do you like most about your community? Hmm. I guess it's peaceful and I'm not bothered. Well... Most people around where I live are nice. They're always nice to me. Very uncommon when I come in to someone that's mad at me. Have you ever tried something too old to swallow that tasted too good not to? Yeah. I've, I've swallowed old food, especially old candy. What's your favorite discounted vintage food? What would it be? Favorite as far as taste would definitely be the candy video. All right, I'm getting up for a moment. I got to get something to drink. And then we'll continue this. How long have we been doing this? Wow, 49 minutes and we're not even halfway through. All right, I'll be back in just a moment. I'm back. Can't believe that I've been doing this for almost an hour. Did, did not feel like it. I thought I was going to be here like 15 minutes. Time is flying when you're having fun. Can you do an update on your fish? I only have one left. Pigeon, no more. Leech, yes, I'll show you. Frog, I don't have it anymore. It disappeared. It must have passed away and the LG eater must have ate it since it's a cleanup janitor fish. I love both of your channels. Both are awesome. Thank you. What are some of your long-term goals? My long-term goal is to stay happy, 
not be as depressed and keep doing good. This is a, hypo a hypothetical question. Are you leading 100 people whose lives are in danger? And, and most choose between two courses of action. The option would save 90 people while other would have a 50-50% chance of saving someone. But if you were to fail, everyone would die. That all depends on the situation and my confidence level. If I'm not very confident that I could save everyone, of course I'd go after the 90 people. Question three this guy has. Um, if you were to have free unlimited service for five years from a world-class cook, housekeeper, chauffeur, or masseuse, or personal secretary, what would it be? Probably a secretary. I'm a mess as far as paperwork. What was your most enjoyable dream and or worst nightmare? That's a tough one. What was the weirdest thing you've seen under a microscope? I can't think of the name. What are those little squiggly worms? Let me look it up real fast. What are those squiggly worms that you can see under a microscope? Nematode. All right. Yeah, I've seen a few of them. No, I've never had botulism. No, I'm not going to make a discord can almost not even keep up with comments as it is. In fact, in the near future, I may have to vastly reduce reading comments. It's actually hurting my eyes. My doctors don't think I should do it anymore. When I post an episode, especially on post 10, I can't keep up with the comments. I'll sit there for hours and my eyes just hurt. But on days when I'm electronic free, my eyes improve. So if I don't stop this, I'm going to need glasses. It's wrecking me. What model of car do you drive? Again, I'm not going to mention it for that reason, but it's uh, the only thing I'm going to tell you is it's a crossover SUV. Those are a dime a dozen. So many people own them, you're not going to know what it is. But when I can afford it, I want to get a truck because I have so many issues off-road. I've been stuck a few times. I have to avoid rocks. I only have like an 8-inch clearance, and that's a problem. I do want to get a bigger truck, but... Anyone that's worth a crap, it's like $30,000. That's going to take many years for me to get something like that. I'm hoping I get lucky with one at a lower price. And I definitely can't get a new one. Those are like fifty grand. How do you keep track of all the culverts and infrastructure you maintain? No, I do not have a map and I don't plot them. It's all in my head. I can see, I can leave right now and find probably 90% of my culverts by memory. How long that silver, silver, inappropriate question. Do you have any plans to travel outside of New England to shoot videos? Yes, I really want to do a cross country. It won't be practical for me to do a trip all at once. At some point when gas prices go down and I'm comfortable with money, I'm going to do top states, second top states on the way back. Then, in the winter time, I want to do the bottom row of southern states, second bottom row of southern states coming back. Then I'll do the middle of the state, then I want to make my way onto Canada. If, my, if I'm still doing well on YouTube, that will probably happen in the next couple years. All right. Uh, would you like to travel? The price of gas makes the idea almost impossible. I live in San Diego, so I have no clue about rural living. Whether you decide to do, whatever you decide to do, I'm sure it'll be great. You haven't disappointed yet. Well, I appreciate that. I bet your gas prices in California must be insane. Probably well over six bucks. We have, the first time in my life I've, I've ever, uh, gas now here, I just paid is 
$4.91. That's the most I've ever paid, and I had to do that yesterday. Butterfinger BBS from 1993. Bro, please, please get some vintage hot sauces. I think they would be good. Actually, I tried a vintage hot sauce. It was this tiny little Tabasco container from an MRE meal. It was 30 years old. I tried that on the food. It still tasted good. Can you film a trip to Dollar Tree? I could. That'd be pretty boring, though. I could do that on my other channel. Or no, maybe I'd do it here. That's kind of food related. I'd probably do that here. I, I didn't mean post 10. I, I meant like one of my... I have a channel called Northeast Outdoors. I put like failed videos on. Things I think are just so boring. I don't want to bombard people. But if they're interested, I got like lousy videos there. Yeah, I shop at Dollar Tree a lot. But since they went to $1.25, I realized I can save so much more money by just buying in bulk at Walmart. If I buy like a three-pack of something at Walmart, it's cheaper than Dollar Tree now. I used to do so much shopping there. I don't do it anymore. You don't save anymore. What made you want to invest in... Uh... Yeah, that's the old food question again. All right, I got to copy and paste a word. See what they're talking about. No, I uh, am not a descendant of the country Hungary. I think a video a lot of people would be interested in would be a full walkthrough of your camera gear. I'm going to do that right when I'm done. Basically, all the typical video production gear you bring with you. You're going to be surprised. It's not a lot. Years ago, I spent a lot of money on camera gear and stuff, and people, they don't like it. I spent, I bought expensive DSLR cameras, big zoom cameras, digital cameras. People would rather me on my phone like I'm doing now. Phone cameras have come such a long way, people don't even realize I'm using those. I, I tried going over to the other one, and everyone was like, whatever you're doing, stop. They didn't like them at all, so I'm never wasting my money on an expensive digital camera again. Probably not. Uh, I'm not going to go ghost hunting. Have you ever considered doing videos focusing on finding particular species? That's a good idea. Yeah, we have a lot of spotted salamanders around here. Have some of those in a video I, I posted on Post 10 a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, called Oh My God, So Many Frogs, something like that. Do you pay attention to our local sports teams? Red Sox, Bruins, Celtics, Patriots, Revs. If so, what do you think of the Sox? No, I'm not really into sports. Most of my family follows the Red Sox, but I'm not really into it. They also follow the Patriots. All right. Um, some of my favorite reviewers have... If you like the idea, but are not sure how to pull it off, get in touch. Hmm. I believe your comment is talking about paranormal activities. I Sorry if I'm not understanding that correctly. Yeah, you're right. The reply, the spam is probably the grossest thing I've ever tried. Hi, I enjoy your videos very much. I have a sizable collection of comparative metal boxes for holiday candy, crackers, etc. I would like to communicate with you directly. All right. How and when did you get your first vintage can opener? That was on the side of the road. The other one I bought an estate sale for 10 bucks, but the original rival was on the side of the road for free after an estate sale. Brought it home on my bicycle. Have you ever been curious about opening decades old food? I 
I don't really have a question, but I want to say I appreciate this niche of content you have made here. Keep up the great work. I love your videos. Do you have a regular 9 to 5 job, or is it just a YouTube thing? If so, what is it? I do not have a regular 9 to 5 job. I have never had one in my life. My first job was lawn care, which I could basically do whenever I wanted. Whenever I was done with the job, I got to go home. That. I never really had a real job. After that, I was an electrical apprentice for a few years, and uh, the guy I worked with was very lenient. Basically, if I showed up and did the work, I could show up anytime. I could show up in the middle of the night as long as I got it done. No, I have no siblings. I'm an only child. Do you do any hunting or fishing? I used to go fishing with my father. It was never to eat. He just wanted me to know how to do it for fun and survival purposes. We would catch bullheads, mostly pumpkin seeds, but we'd always set them free. Uh, I've never been hunting. Update on gray water system you installed. I have not yet used it, but it's functional if I ever want to hook a garden up to it. I'm just using the septic system for now. I have an aging septic system that's 50 something years old. I'm concerned that eventually it may break down and I want to still be able to use the shower if it fails. Uh, any movie series, any favorite movies, TV series, etc. I will show you my movie collection after too. I have like a whole bottom shelf end to end of this room. Some of it's my father's collection, the rest of it I've collected since a kid. What did you want to be as a kid? I wanted to be a lot of things. I think everyone wants to be a specific thing their whole life, or you have many ideas. I had many ideas growing up. I would love you to go to an art museum or gallery. Just a thought, maybe on your other channel. Um, what made you want to unclog culverts? Culverts are a thing I've actually done myself. It was an extension to unclogging street drains. Lucky for me, I was able to get my OSHA training for that. I have ex uh, confined space training. Uh, yeah, so I also did that with a few companies. Nothing official. It was more of just learning. It was never a job. It was more of a learning experience. So now I know how to do that stuff safely. Because you can get literally killed in some of those culverts. Like, I just uploaded a few days ago an example. Big clump of grass gets stuck in the entrance. I had to kick it through. I couldn't get that out. If that was me that fell against that, I would have been trapped. Literally. I may have got free once the water inside was gone, but I still could have been hurt. No, my father got me into that. We used to unclog things in front of the house all the time, even driving around doing it. And one day I decided to film it. Yeah, I'll probably do another Colbert camping video next winter. Not planned right now. That takes a lot of effort finding the right one that won't be dangerous. I would really like to see more videos of the microscope footage of old foods to see if bacteria are in them. I think they are chemical stains that you could add to the slide to make them show up. Yes, I have chemical stains. I've never actually got into that. I stopped with the microscope because I don't have the experience to actually identify what the things are moving around, and I thought that was just boring people. I could go back to that. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? You come across as very mature in your videos post-10. Just turned 21. Hey bro, do you have an interest in the mushroom world? Have you ever considered doing mushroom foraging video when the time is right? That's interesting. Maybe someday. Have you ever record have you ever considered recording time lapses of rotting food or experiments? There's already a lot of channels doing that. If I try that, people are just going to say I'm stealing it. All the stuff I basically do on my channel is stuff I've come up myself. Good idea, though. 
I love those videos people have where they put like a piece of food in there with like hundreds of maggots or mealworms just devouring it over a time lapse. Love that. I like the unboxings. Consider doing some modern reviews in modern MREs too. I do those occasionally. Question, have you ever considered doing some giveaways? Nothing expensive, just finds while exploring and stuff. That's a bit complicated for me to do as far as the post office. And no, I would never get a P.O. box either. I've seen all the weird stuff enemies send to other people who do that during their live streams. Don't want to be part of that. Do you like the Legend of Bigfoot or other creatures you can think of? Yeah, I love the Legend of Bigfoot. I got a sign right here that says, Warning, Bigfoot area, stay on marked trails. And I also have a sign that says, Warning, Sasquatch. I'll show that maybe. How do the people you live with feel about the smells that, yeah, that can really piss off people? When I opened the old fish was the worst for other people, and the spam was pretty bad too. Uh... Have you ever seen a Polish vampire in Burbank while eating dinner? What cameras do you use? That is a Samsung S20 that I'm using right now. My secondary camera, which is my old one, is a Samsung S10. Uh, and I have a Samsung S8 that I don't mind getting destroyed, but that I will use as a secondary camera if I think the water may take it. I used to use... Uh, Canon re Rebel cameras, but people didn't like those. I thought they were super clear, but people don't like them. Yes, I've encountered many bears and moose, but they always seem to leave me alone. I have bear spray, just in case. Have you ever gotten... I'd love to see another old beer video. I don't have any more old beer, so unless I find some at an estate, so that won't happen again. But if I do find some, I'll definitely do a video on it. What are people's reactions when they see your collection of old food? Some people just don't get it. Make more camping and gun videos, post 10. I definitely want to do more camping videos. I have never made real firearm videos. Uh, you must be talking about my pellet gun and airsoft videos. Haven't done those in like three, four years. I find them pretty boring. Does anyone really want to see me using a pellet gun meant for squirrels at tin cans? It's kind of boring. I started doing YouTube videos for fun. And to show things. No, I'm not high. Felt pretty high a few days ago when I took a antibiotic pill without food. That was a big no-no. I'm, I'm pretty much desensitized to these smells. That's why I don't throw up or react to them. Also, I think other people's channels who do similar stuff, they just do that for views, pretending it's so awful. I was probably 10 years old when I first started unclogging drains with my father. Your work reminds me of when I was a kid and I would ride around with my dad, who ran the country road the county road department clearing drains and downed trees are you looking for a buddy to get beers and play halo 3 with i have never actually played video games i'm not into that uh honestly if my family had enough money to be able to buy me video games and systems like that uh I don't think I'd be who I was, who I am today. I don't want to be one of those people that just sits around on video games all day doing nothing. I did try some old games like Frogger, is that what it's called? Uh, some old Atari games my dad had. That was a pretty cool 80s system, but I've done no modern video games. I have no interest in them.
I'm a paranormal investigator. And so I was wondering, have you ever encountered anything unexplainable? No, I haven't. I have, have not been metal detecting in many years. I mean, it's a good idea. I have a metal detector in the room. I could do that with some old abandoned train tracks that are supposedly torn up. I used to do that in my uh, grandparents' backyard when they had train tracks that were abandoned. We've seen you eat and review m many old foods. What are some of the products you enjoy eating on a regular basis? Are you talking about old food on a regular basis or stuff I usually eat? I'm not the most healthy person. I eat a lot of burgers and frozen food. No. I have never traveled outside. Actually, yes, I have. I did travel outside of the U.S. once. I have a YouTube video on that. It was by accident. At the top of New Hampshire, their Canadian border is kind of confusing. It says, with an arrow, parking for trail, right? I didn't realize it's right here, the parking spaces. They're all worn off. You can't see them one bit, and it was a rainy day. I thought, because the Canadian border trail is on the actual physical border, and you're allowed to hike it from both countries, I thought this dirt area on the satellite map was where I was supposed to park. So I drove through the open border gate and parked there, and some guys came out and like, hey, hey, hey. Nothing happened. They knew it was an accident, but I had to pull into Canada's custom building. They asked me questions. COVID was big back then, so they were like afraid to take my license and stuff. They, they asked me if I had weapons. I had no weapons. They did not care about pocket knives. They, they, they didn't search me. They were desperate. They were very afraid of COVID. Came back. U.S. border searched most of my car. They didn't do a great job. I think they knew it was an innocent mistake. They didn't even check the glove box or anything, but no problem. That was a cool video, though, if anyone wants to see it. Look up Accidentally Crossing the Border. Uh, oh, we finally got back to one-day-old comments, so we're more than halfway done. Nope, never poisoned to myself. I started exploring old places maybe five years ago. Love your videos. Even though I live in England and it's nice to see food items from the past. It's seeing, smelling in old cases, tasting history all in one. Thank you for the compliment on my display. Will you please start a Patreon so we can subscribe? It will help with the cost of your channel. Yeah, these videos on this channel average probably cost 40 bucks each. I pay an average for each canned food between 15 and sometimes 70 bucks per can. And a lot of my recent videos, I can't make that money back through monetization. So it, that's all right. As long as I can afford it, I will keep going on. Just bigger videos are pulling the weight of ones that don't do so well. Like my last unboxing video, you saw me open that $350 mystery box. That got me quite a way. I haven't broke even yet, but that's all right. And just so you guys know, during the summertime, I will be uploading less as I focus more on my job and post 10. Just like last year, I didn't upload on this channel for like six months straight. I don't plan on doing that again. I'm probably going to upload at least once a month for you guys. Oh, and as far as this question, Patreon. My Post 10 does have a Patreon, but that funding does not go to this channel. That funds those expensive off-road trips I go on. I, I don't, I'm not going to start a Patreon for this. I'm doing well enough as is, and this channel is starting to lose interest. If I don't think of another subject or someone else doesn't think of another subject, it will be uploading a lot less. What has been your favorite food find since... Um, no, I am not a millennial. I am technically a Gen Z, born after 1998. Filming beavers at work with hidden cameras. Yes, good idea. I'm actually starting that. I started that two weeks ago. It is hard to get beavers on camera. I don't know if they're afraid of the infrared or what. I have a few out on the job right now. We'll check those cameras in like a week, see if we got anything. How do you find the time to travel post 10 as well? Actually, my uh, I probably am gone doing post 10 videos three days out of the week. 
each day I probably make two or three videos. I post them slowly as I get the time to edit it. It seems you do hundreds of miles. I'll do a couple thousand miles on one trip. Uh, business miles for post 10 was almost 38,000 miles last year. Without biz With business and personal, 45,000 miles I traveled last year. So yes, with these rising gas prices, it can get expensive. I will not be traveling as much this year as a result and making the trips count. How did you come up with your username? Well, this channel is was supposed to be New England Wildlife, and I it, it was supposed to be a wildlife channel with occasionally doing something more. I don't want to throw people off. I'm never going to change the name of it. So that's why it, it was like that. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, can you identify the difference between a filling and rinsing machine? I'm not sure what that means. What prompted you to start the drain cleaning? I already did that. Um, uh, I, I, don't, I don't mean to be rude to any of your comments. I'm just trying not to keep repeating duplicate ones. Um, if it's not too personal, can you tell us more about your dyslexia? Did it have much of an impact on growing up? Your two channels are amazing, by the way. I can't get enough of them. They, were, they are so relaxing to watch. Yeah, I do have dyslexia, which means sometimes you'll see me word things wrong in a different tense. Like sometimes I'll say in the near future instead of the recent past. And sometimes when I'm writing, it's a jumble of words, I mean letters out of order. My brain will keep reading that as it's supposed to be until someone points it out. That's why I sometimes have mistakes in my titles and stuff. I'm getting better over time, but also... People have told me my brain thinks faster than I can act, which means I kind of talk over myself sometimes. Tunnel vision, some people call it. Did you move to a different house? Is that why you no longer use the magic drain at the end of your videos? I have a new drain, but yes, this is a different house. This is actually a house I bought from a foreclosing company at like a tenth of the price. It was abandoned many years. That's why it t it's taking me a lot to get it back into order. That's why I had no working water for two years. Everything is almost complete, but it's taking a lot of time and money. I should have everything done in another year. It's a very small house, by the way. So that's what's making it manageable. With the prices of things these days, I'm glad I didn't try to rehab a bigger house. This house was actually supposed to be a flip for me to make money, but I, I decided to keep it. It's only a 700 square foot house, which is fairly small. Uh, we ever do a cross country trip to film Calverts? Culverts, you mean? Uh, that would be really cool. Yes, I do want to do that. Gas prices and stuff's too high. Plus, I have to factor in if I'm on the road, if I can't find rivers and stuff to bathe in, I'm going to have to go to a motel room at least once a week, clean up, use their Wi Fi and stuff, charge up, different gear for the trip, lots and lots of fuel. Food, all, all the stuff that I would need for a trip. Um, I estimated a trip like that would be eight grand. That's when gas prices were slightly below three dollars. Now that they're about to hit five, I, I, I am not even going to think about doing a trip like that. I can't afford it right now. I will continue more questions in just one moment. I want to make sure this camera is not running out of battery. We've been doing this a very long time. All right, we're on an hour and nineteen minutes. And we still have 74%, so we're doing good. I'm almost set done. All right. Love your videos. You do your own thing, and I totally respect that. Thank you. Living New England. Has arsenic in the drinking water affected your life in any way? I have read it's a big problem. No, I haven't. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Like, you talking about, like, it leaked from somewhere? like an airport or the chemicals that happened in neighboring towns around me. Have you considered doing more sea ration videos? No, like I said, because there's only so many sea rations you can get and I've done most of them. Um, hey, I'm glad I inspired you to start microscope stuff yourself. Thank you. Sorry for leaving so many comments. But I am James from Tennessee. 
A room tour would be great, thanks. I do not game at all. I am an avid viewer and enjoy your videos. I like the way you talk through them and explain what you are doing and why. One of my favorite videos was the overnight in the culvert with all the rushing water beneath you and all the spider friends. I love your abandoned building videos. Also cleaning out that nasty truck with the mice. Hilarious. I love you. I l would love to see an in-depth video of your favorite things collection, your jars and artifacts. Do you still have your pet leash? Um, I'll, I will do more camping videos overnight. What is the furthest out you travel for your videos? Please detail gas and car expenses. You don't have to give dollar figures if you don't want to. But describe wear and tear on the car, gas concerns, and other related traveling you do. Yeah, my car actually has problems right now. I, I'm hoping the noises it's making are just the shocks are going bad. It still gives me a smooth ride, but every bump is like bump, 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 bump. I can't believe it. The car dealer actually said uh, they recommend not changing them, I'm trying to save me money. They're just loud. Yeah, I'm trying not to put any more money into my vehicle. I don't have to. I want to replace that. It's not big enough for the dirt roads I travel. It's going to get me into trouble someday if I don't work on replacing it. Yes, I do. Yep, yep. Yeah, he says what I just was talking about. Yes, I do want to get a vehicle more suited to the dirt roads I travel. Thanks, Post 10. Love your videos. Keep them coming. What is the furthest... Oh, wait. I'm not done answering his question yet. Yeah, gas is expensive. When I go off-road, I need many tanks of gas. My car, when I lived in the city, Massachusetts City, where I moved out of, and into more of the hill towns now, uh, I got 420 miles on a full tank of gas. That was my range. Now I get about 330, because there's more hills. So, I have two gas cans. will fill my car once. When I'm off-roading, I have six five gallon gas cans plus the car it now costs me with these awfully inflated prices about 180 dollars to completely fill up if i'm empty what is the furthest you have ever gone to get a unique item like furthest uh hard work to get it or the furthest i've traveled unique item if that means like a video i've traveled pretty far posty big fan thank you so much for the quality content i wanted you i just wanted to know what your favorite music genre is and your favorite place to go out to eat i hope all is well boss as always be safe and keep and uh, always be safe and thanks for reading i'm sorry i'm getting tired um Favorite music. I uh, I listen to a lot of pop music, certain country songs, stuff like that. Mixed radio stations, I guess you could say. And this guy says, what is a bear? It's a big, hairy animal. All right. Now, we just made it to the end. I'm going to re- circulate this to make sure no one else left comments in the past two hours. I don't want to forget you that I'm going to delete this whole, whole post so nobody gets mad that I, didn't, that I didn't answer anything. No, nobody has said anything since then. Um, how exactly? Here we go. I'm going to delete this post. I just deleted everything right there. Restart the page and everything should be gone. Now I'm going to show you guys around the room. All right, everything's gone. So let me show you guys around the room. Where should I start first? Uh, these are these camera lights got at Walmart's discount shelf, 10 bucks a piece. See, it's made to put your phone or something in here, but they work good as extra lighting. Oh, wow. I didn't even realize all my lights aren't even on.
probably should have had them on during this, but then I would have been blinded the whole time. So these are lights I just added for extra lighting. Here we got some big cans of chips. So over here, here's a Russian MRE video at some point. The oldest pasta I've ever had from the 1950s. It had a toy included. Here's some humanitarian MREs. Lithuanian MRE. There's some old beans. This is an old, I think, contactor from a CSX train building that they were removing. This was in the dumpster when they were tearing down their communication sheds. These are all decorative Mountain Dew bottles. They are all indeed full. Here's some more of my old food collection. Here's old emergency water. I was super contaminated with lead. Here's the old, this is the most popular video we ever did. It was cream corn from the 30s. Got some fish here. These are unopened pound cakes and stuff. Those are the sea rations for breeze. These products are all pretty cool. Mac and cheese was cool. This after, be these are all 70s. This was a, I can't believe it actually made, to be honest. This was something I was going to do a video with, but I was like, that's not on subject. Because I wanted to know if this actually worked. It's supposed to make it so you don't strip out a screw. Here's a cool face mask I got. It's like a giant sunglass. You know, it makes you kind of look like an alien when you wear it. thought that was pretty cool. It's good for being snow blinded. Mum. There's the old Arabic jello. See if I turn it around. Here's the old banana flakes. It's a type of baby food. Cowboy hat wearing polar bears. Some old creepy dolls. This is gross. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I can't clean that off. That was always there. There's the old stinky fish. Here's the old Burger King burgers. The one that says fake meat. That's the impossible burger right there growing some mold. They're both pretty sludgy right now. Here's my area of old sodas, drinks, beers. Right here is my pet leech. It's an easy animal. It's not too active. It hides most of the time underneath that rock. There's some old candy. Some old champagne. Old candy tin. That's where all that candy there came out of. Uh, some random junk on these shelves. I'm probably going to end up putting in a yard sale eventually. Here's some really old canning someone did from the 30s that's supposedly minced meat. Some coffee cans. Here's bear spray. I bought this in case I ever went on a cross-country trip out west. Going to need that if you're exploring those type of areas. Right here is a big truck mirror. Mirror off a truck, maybe a bus. Found that on the side of the road once. Um, there's an old picture I salvaged from a dumpster a while back. Um, right here is a uh, CB radio. I bought that originally for trying to listen to what they're doing while train watching. It also has an emergency weather radio, which is cool. Here's an old metal detector. It's nothing professional. I've had that for a while. And there's just a bunch of random camera supplies sitting around. Uh, more camera lights, dive lamp. This little scale was from the video I did weighing the pet leech before and after a feeding. Right here are a bunch of humanitarian MREs. I believe that's a box of 12. 
Uh, some train postcards. Glue gun for a different project I was working on. There's that C ration box that I was mentioning. Here's some camping gear over here for the camping videos I do. This is also padding for sleeping in the car. I was doing another video here a few weeks ago. I, I don't think I'm ever going to complete this video. It wasn't exciting. I wanted to see if these old seeds would grow that I found in this container here. They range from the early 90s through the early 2000s. Nothing grew. I kept kept them watered for a few weeks. Nothing ever sprouted, unfortunately. But oh, someone asked about what movies I have. Not all these movies I like, but this is what I got in the my movie collection, if anyone's interested. Make sure that focuses in a bit. Let me... Yeah, there we go. If anyone wants to pause, these are the movies I have in my collection. Certain ones I really like, certain ones I don't. That's a cool movie. Shapeshifter and Twilight Zone. What's this? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It looks like a something someone just burned. I believe the Exorcist is up there because it's missing from the box. And the rest of them are VHS tapes. None of them are mine. They were actually here when I got the place. I just left them here. That's why I started putting movies in here, since they already had their collection. So none of this I actually bought. It just came with the place. A lot of Disney movies. Yep. Trying to see if there's anything else you might want to see in here.